somebody has been clever enough to, to see what there is going on in people's mind, in the unconscious mind, uh, uh, would be able to predict it. For instance, I have predicted the Nazi rising in Germany uh, through the observation of my German patients. They had dreams in which the whole thing was anticipated. When you observe the world, you see people, you see houses, you see the sky, uh, you see tangible objects. But when you observe yourself within, you see moving images, a world of images. Uh, generally known as fantasies. And yet these uh, fantasies are facts. See, it is a fact that a man has such and such a fantasy. And it is such a tangible fact, for instance, that when a man has a certain fantasy, uh, another man may lose his life. And when you observe the stream of images within, you observe an aspect of the world. The world hangs on a thin thread. And that is the psyche of man. Assume that uh, certain fellows in Moscow lose their nerve or their common sense uh, for a bit and uh, the whole world is in fire and, and flames we are the great danger the psyche is the great danger what if something goes wrong with the psyche so you see this it is demonstrated to us in our days what, what the power of the psyche is of man. How important it is to know something about it. But we know nothing about it. Serious people who have listened to these arguments and reject them, and I understand that. But they do not, I think, adequately address the issue, and adequately face what I think is a very real prospect that we are drifting towards the use of nuclear weapons or maybe even the nuclear war. It seems to me that that prospect has gotten more likely each year in the last few decades. So it's not just a matter of a terrorist getting a nuclear bomb, although that's probably the number one worry, but there's also a possibility today of, a, of another nuclear war starting. So we, the probability that happens is not fully recognized or understood by most people, and the horror of such a result is not fully understood by most people.
big time. We're all right on the same page with that. And we can get dark right out of the gate. But I mean, part of Saturn and Aquarius has been Nazism, the rise of Nazism in the 30s. Hitler took over um, with the Enabling Act, the Reichstag fire, all that stuff happened with Saturn and Aquarius. And um, that's the kind of stuff we're, we're going to be faced with. And I'm not saying it's, you know, I'm not even, you know, that there will be these kind of new orders that are installed that then. I mean, that regime was all about propaganda, but I don't think we can remove that from the table. When uh, Saturn went into Aquarius in 2020, that's def like I definitely felt that that shift because that's when the um, that's when the new normal kind of rolled out. So. Attention America, we've officially turned into Berlin, Germany in 1940. So it's a little history lesson for everyone out there. Does anyone remember what the Nazi Germans did before they took power? Well, they banned church services, they burned Bibles and books in the streets, they burned the flag, they tore down statues, they got rid of any and all history that they disagree with, they got rid of the public police only the rich could afford it, they banned guns, they got rid of God, they put their country in a state of fear, and they created domestic terrorist organizations who got rid of anyone and anything they disagree with, aka the brown shirts. Now does that sound familiar? 2020 is epic on multiple fronts. It's like a... Um, uh, uh, coalescence of these multiple long-term cycles just hammering reality and, and the, the big thing about 2020 was that Jupiter Mars and um, Saturn conjoined in Capricorn in the south node during the Aries ingress and this and according to traditional astrologers is really how we map energy we have to look at the chart of the Aries ingress it's like a snapshot that becomes what they call the root chart and so the last time we had an Aries ingress with Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, and the South Node, I think it was, I can't get the exact year, it was either 14, uh, sorry, 490 or 520, but it was right around the time of the fall of the Roman Empire. Is, do you see us now as just in this new era? <laughs> yeah, we're not on the other side. I mean, this is, we're just at the beginning. We're in like the, the warm up. My view. We're in the pre, you know, maybe the first innings happen, maybe a few outs have taken place, but no, I don't. I think we're just getting started. Outrage boiling over in Minnesota, with tensions already high during the Derek Chauvin murder trial, now new anger sparked when a police officer fatally shot a black man Sunday during a traffic stop. Ukraine says Russia has amassed an additional 50,000 troops, most of them on Russia's western border near the Donbass region. The rest in Crimea, where 31,000 troops are already deployed. From what we're seeing, this massive escalation, the U.S. government calling it the biggest appointment of Russian troops on the ground on the border there uh, in seven years. The brutal military crackdown on Myanmar's pro-democracy protesters continues, with more than 80 killed on Saturday, according to local media. Authorities regularly shut down internet access, and that's forced activists to return to old-fashioned methods of spreading their revolutionary message. Israeli public radio says the country has carried out a cyber attack on an Iranian nuclear facility facility. Citing unidentified intelligence sources, the report on Khan Radio said the Mossad spy agency had carried out a cyber operation 
at the Natanz nuclear plant, which is key to Iran's uranium enrichment program. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has sent a warning to China over aggressive action against Taiwan. China sends more fighter jets into Taiwan's air defense zone in a stepped-up show of force around the island that Beijing claims as its own. But as this report tells us, Taiwan is unfazed, saying it would fight to the end if China attacks.